<laughs> Sean, if I can come back to you. Um, I'm just curious from your perspective, would recording and sharing of memory be limited only to veteran? No, no, definitely not. I mean, um, my grandmother sent three of her men across, uh, my grandfather, my father, and myself, my mother twice. I, you know, the stories from the home front are just as impactful as the, the stories from overseas and, and the front line. Um, to to hear the stories of a Silver Cross mother are invaluable to making an impression on, on people of what it's like to actually lose somebody you love overseas. It has to be something that's part of the record. So all the work that you do in reaching out to young people, and I know the amazing work you do here uh, in our community with cadets, I, I also appreciate that. Can you just tell us why you do it? Because it needs to be done. We don't carry memory just in us. We carry it in our children. I learned everything I learned about my military family history from my parents, from my grandparents. My children know about military history because I was part of it. I was in Germany when the wall came down. I was in Cyprus when the UN got the, the 50th, uh, got the Nobel Peace Prize. I was at OCA. Um, you know, I, I'm part of Canadian history. My family's part of Canadian history. My family carries the, the post-nominal title United Empire given to us by Queen Victoria for the service of Sergeant Perry during the American Revolution. It's all part of us. And every Canadian has that connection to that history. So being able to uh, give Canadians access to all of that archival information, helping get this stuff declassified, and then connecting soldiers, families, so that they can tell the story. I gave, I brought medals that I found at a, uh, a pawn shop, and I had them mounted and put into a frame so that I could give them to a family who's lost the medals and then connect their family to the, the history of a family member who served because they never knew. 